Okay. Here we have another screwdriver in the uh, roundup for the big test. This is a model TV-CSO2. Let me prove my age here for a second. Yes, TY-CSO2. Uh, 3.6 volt. The battery is 1300, which I assume is going to be 1300 milliamp hours. And the manufacturer is Ningbo Tinai Tools, T I A N Y I. Lithium ion cordless screwdriver, screwdriver bit collet. That's the tip. On off trigger switch right here. Charging socket to the side and charging indicator. Let's see. Uh, and that's not English. Let's do English. Here we go. Technical data. Uh, type again TYCSO2 is I'm going to say the model number voltage is 3.6 volt DC battery 18650 1300 milliamp hours so it's got a single 13 uh, 18650 battery in it which is pretty decent the only concern I would have is if it's an inadequate uh, charger built into the uh, screwdriver because an 18650 battery is not something you want to play with. You definitely want to have an auto shut off and you definitely want it to uh, kind of look at the battery to make sure it's not completely discharged before it tries to start charging it because that's not good either. Uh, speed 250 RPM max torque is 2 Newton meters which that's great if it's two newton meters then and that then i can take this one and use it to set a screw uh and the rest of them can see if if they can get the screw out or not and this may be may be the control i'm not sure uh this is uh, a little bit different from the rest all the rest of them have been uh, four millimeter uh bits this one is a quarter inch. All your standard bits for screwdrivers, at least in America, use quarter inch. So, uh, max torque again is two newton meters. Charge time three to five hours, which uh, far exceeds what we talked about on the other screwdrivers. Now, it's quite small. You can see in my hands here, uh, I have short fingered pudgy hands uh, I would describe them as as big in size but short in stature maybe that that's a description uh, you see all these people on YouTube they always tell I've got big hands well I've got fat hands or old grizzly hands however you want to look at it uh, doctor sewed that back on when I was five so um, cordless screwdriver that is what it's called. And that is big enough to have a uh, single 18650. I actually could get two 18650s in here, but there wouldn't be any room for gearing. So apparently it's just going to be one 18650, and your gear setup is probably in this last section right here. It wouldn't take very much room to, to get the gearing in there. And then your electronics and, and whatnot would be in here with, of course, your controls. And there's your charging indicator light, and there's a charging port, which looks like a mini USB charging port. And it's pretty simple. Reverse, forward. And I think this is probably the loudest one. Sounds like the old school uh, screwdrivers, and just like the rest of them. I can't stop them. Put the so it's got uh, 
apparently two newton meters of, of torque is a pretty decent amount of torque. And it's the same specs we already read in the instructions. So uh, this is, again is, is a quick overview of uh, another screwdriver. And uh, I really do think I'm going to probably use this as the control. And uh, still get my, uh, it's, I bought it years and years ago. It's called a fat wrench. And I bought it, I think it was from Brownells. Uh, and I bought it primarily to set uh, scope bases and scope rings because you really want to torque that correctly. You don't want to over torque a scope ring because you can actually deform the tube on a scope and uh, throw the sight off. Uh, just to, I guess, a bit of useless information there. So, uh, there it is. I mean, it's not a whole lot to talk about as far as this is concerned. Uh, again, uh, I will be going over details uh, with all these. Of course, I'm, I'm not reading the instructions no more than what I've already read them. Um, but uh, we'll go into a little more detail with all the screwdrivers. I'll get them all laid out, lined up, and uh, do some comparisons uh, between all of them. Uh, I think all of the measurements I'll, I'll, I'll give are going to be without the bit in the end of it because some bits are longer, some bits are, are just different styles and, and so on and so forth. So it, it's, the length is going to be the tool itself that I give on each one of the screwdrivers. So hopefully within the next few weeks, uh, maybe a little longer, I'll get the rest of the screwdrivers in. And I'll be able to do individual looks at them just so you can see what we got. Uh, I'll give uh, diameters and all the details on each one of them. Or I'll probably put all of that in the, uh, in, in the description on that video. Which that video will probably be a longer detailed video because I'd, I'd like to do a pretty good uh, um, comparison on those. So uh, you can look at them and, and kind of decide. Uh, whether expensive is worth it or if inexpensive is worth it and in my opinion and experience uh, expensive can be worth it it just depends on how you use it how much you use uh, something like this right here or how little you use something like this uh, if, if you're just uh, occasionally taking something apart it's no reason to get uh, an expensive uh, screwdriver. But if you're doing it all the time, then you want something that's going to last. And probably an expensive one would be the better one for doing that. But I do have a cheap one uh, that I have that I've used for probably a year now. And it's held up and did great. And I'm, I'm well pleased with it. Uh, but, I mean, it's, I've probably taken... 10 or 15 things apart with it other than just randomly using it here there and yonder for a little bit and I'm talking about uh, big things like uh, old CRT monitors printers uh, large office printers uh, you name it I mean I've uh, laptops and just all all manner of stuff I've taken apart with that screwdriver and uh, it's held up and did good TVs uh, uh, last thing I took apart with it was actually my old TV I had, uh, which I don't watch television. I watch YouTube. YouTube's my thing. I like to learn stuff. I don't like to watch people pretend to be other people on television. So, well, I don't know. That's kind of <laughs> that's kind of uh, hypocritical, isn't it? Because there's a lot of people on YouTube pretend to be... <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I think I'll edit that out. Anyway, so uh, that's a, hopefully a quick or maybe a long-winded uh, talk about this this little screwdriver right here. But uh, I think this is going to be a pretty cool one to, to, to keep around just, just because of the uh, quarter-inch uh, bits that it accepts. Because uh, I have, let's see, I've got some DeWalt bits here. Uh, these are actually... When you see the DeWalt bits like this, it's got the thin neck. Uh, that is a impact bit. And what it basically means is all of your screwdriver bits are hardened to a certain extent. And just the average one, when you put it in an impact screwdriver, it'll tend to shatter it or break it. But these right here, this, this shaft is not plastic. 
but this shaft is, I guess, tempered to a certain specification for DeWalt so that it can survive the impact from a impact driver and still screw a screw in and, and come to uh, a certain torque without actually breaking the bit. So that's pretty pretty cool. More, more useless information, but uh, that's quarter inch and it fits in this screwdriver as well. So I think that's a, a great, uh, this would be a great one to have on the bench. All right, so uh, that's all I've got for right now. Um, and I'll be seeing you on the next one. I appreciate you watching. Thanks and God bless.